All right, so A. Popper asks, what's the difference between thoughts, ideas, categories, and spiritual beings, angels, powers, principalities, both in how we engage with them, hosts give them body, and their impact on who we are, our identity? First of all, in yourself. So maybe a good way to see it would be to understand the fractal nature of, of reality, you could say. And so there are certain of those things which are inside you. And so thoughts, ideas, uh, or inside humanity, you could say. It would also inside you. Thoughts, ideas, categories. All of this is within you. And these things, they, they, they have a more active role than sometimes you might think. They play out as programs. You're not, you're not as much in control of those things as you wish you were, let's say. Uh, ultimately, the idea would be to have you as a, as a centralized being. And no matter how you phrase it, 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 in a way, it doesn't even matter. Like a lot of these categories, when people ask if people have souls and all this stuff, like, the, I mean, yes, but the, you understand it is what you need to do if you want to know what it's about. And so that there's, that there's something which binds you all together, right? That holds all of this multiplicity of thoughts, categories, uh, let's say thoughts and ideas, first of all, right? That's first. That's mostly, let's say, within you, um, and se- and then there are spiritual beings, which are something like that, but they're more active and they're more cosmic. That is, they are the they are the cosmic aspect. So, as you as a microcosm have, you could say you have these little desires and thoughts and gods, that, like these little gods in you. If you want to understand it that way, you have these little thoughts and and ideas and uh, and desires and they're all inside you and they're all fighting and they're all trying to have power and they're trying to get power over the other. They're trying to get your attention and they're doing all these things. They're trying to get all your resources. They're doing all of this. And then hopefully you can align them together so that they are, they flow naturally from your, your, your identity, you could say. And then in the world, then there's a version of that, but it now it's a cosmic version. So there are, principalities which act in the world which bind groups together which bind which bind all these things uh, all these the way in which the world manifests itself together and ultimately they they when they're not let's say brought together under god then they tend to create conflict and to create to create conflict so the mystery which is maybe difficult the mystery is that in a certain manner all of this ultimately is resolved by, you could say, man, or by the incarnation. And so the perfect union of God and man is the is actually the place where all of this resolves. And so there's a certain man in which, although these, these spiritual beings, which are more cosmic, uh, are have a different, are on a different scale than your thoughts and your desires and your ideas, uh, not... Ultimately, they are, let's say, ultimately, they should also be subject to man, man with a capital M, right? The incarnate man and the manner in which we participate in that as human beings. Um, now, hopefully that makes sense. Now, what's, what's interesting is you can see that there's a relationship between the cosmic beings and you inside. And so that's why... You could say something like, that's why demons affect you. Because the demon is a demon of pride or is a demon of this, which is also inside you as an invisible desire, an invisible thought pattern, or an invisible motivation that you have. And then those are connected to the cosmic version of that. So all the imagery of like a demon oppressing you or a demon uh, possessing you, all of these things are because there's a direct, relationship between the way you are made and the way the cosmos is made and so sometimes you can read text and it almost seems confusing it's like is it this person's sins desires or is it a demon that's oppressing them and ultimately there's a way in which it's it's always both at the same time uh because there's a there's a cosmic reflection that when you become a slave of a passion or of a thought pattern or something in you you are ultimately participating in the existence of that in the bigger world, right? So if you're, it's not, it's not magical. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's really very basic. It's like, if, if you are 
tempted to be greedy and then you give into that thought pattern and that desire and then you you act in greed right then that will connect that is what will make greed grow in the world and there'll be more greed in the world so you're feeding this demon so that the world itself will become greedier because the world doesn't become greedier unless people become greedier and but you could also say like if the world becomes greedier then people will also become greedier there's like a <coughs> there's a top down and a bottom up relationship um and so i think that that's the best way to understand it and so now in terms of categories categories seem a little less active but they're nonetheless active to a certain extent it's not exactly in the way that you would think but you can understand that that so it's like let's say i have a category so i i have a a pen okay and so this pen is a, is a category it's an invisible pattern but this pen has subcategories right we've talked about this many times now this is going to sound weird to you but the 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 category of the pen is actively holding together the subcategories which 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 make it a pen this is ultimately happening through us that it's happening through men like i told you ultimately all these patterns are actually ultimately bound to 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 man but there's something less neutral about let's say the man in which categories bind other categories to them the man in which categories participate in higher categories as well there's a judgment right there's a, there's a there's a judgment which is happening the pen is judging whether or not uh, this or that can be part of it. And it's judging it by its purpose, by its teleology, right? If I make a, if I make a, a, a pen with a, with a snowball, right? It's, it's going to not, the pen is going to reject it. The pen is going to judge it and it won't be a good pen. Um, and, and like I said, we're not excluded from that process. We're part of that process, but we can nonetheless describe the world that way. And it's completely, uh, it's completely coherent. It's actually, I think, more coherent than, than uh, if we describe it in another way. Um,